thank you for Blinkist for sponsoring today's video. I recently went on the Screen Test podcast and I said that currently Edge of Tomorrow is the greatest video game movie of all time. I think its cultural impact lies in the fact that it is the greatest video game movie of all time. Which I stand by because Edge of Tomorrow kicks ass and perfectly translates the kill death respawn mechanic. Get three more clips of 556. Five, oh no. Eight grenades. And an extra battery. Get it. That makes games like Borderlands so addicting. And speaking of Borderlands, that movie has all the potential to be the greatest video game adaptation yet. The announcements in front of and behind the camera have been insane. Director Eli Roth's back catalogue of movies like Cabin Fever, Knock Knock and Green Inferno prove that Borderlands' darkly comedic sensibilities will be perfectly translated to the screen. You'll remember my name, which is... <laughs> Eli has re-teamed with his House with a Clock in Its Walls cast of Jack Black and Kate Blanchett. Damn, that was hard to say. Jack Black is joined by Jumanji alum Kevin Hart, and rounding out the cast are the likes of Jamie Lee Curtis, Gina Gershon, Bobby Lee, and more. Borderlands sci-fi action aesthetic is the kind of thing that was made to sell copious amounts of movie tickets to nerds. The latest game was the perfect antidote to cure the monotony of seeing the same four walls every day during the many, many UK lockdowns across the last year. The relentless looting and charm of finding a kick-ass weapon that cooks fools like no tomorrow, the constant onslaught of enemies, big and small, the awesome hail of bullets and poison damage and fire damage, electricity damage, Damage, just really all types of damage it is a cacophony of blood and flames. If we're looking to create a mood board for the gun-toting action of the upcoming Borderlands, what might be some fun suggestions? How can other movies inform the way this world will be captured and cut together? What sort of tone of action and style of movement would suit the frenetic action of the games themselves? What do you want from a Borderlands adaptation, and what action films do you think would inspire you to craft the visual language of the movie? Let me know in the comments below. Do you think the Borderlands movie is going to be good? Are you excited for it? And do you think it will be a good representation of the original video games that became so popular? The visuals of Borderlands already bank on a lot of iconic films, and I think we can get some idea of what to expect there, but the visual language of the action is something that is open to all kinds of possibilities. As much as I love action movies like The Raid and John Wick, I don't need every single action movie to be a one-man army, hand-to-hand -hand heavy gauntlet. Instead, I think the hand-to-hand -hand combat should be used in the movie as often as you melee in a first-person shooter. Not often, but it's a good way to punctuate a kill or get out of a hairy situation. With more of an emphasis on the weaponry and gunplay than close quarters battery, I think Borderlands should instead look less to the raid movies and more to the movie that they openly borrow and pay homage to. Hard Boiled and the action frenzy of John Woo. Small disclaimer, that's not to say that Wick and the Raid doesn't have some exceptional shootouts, or that John Woo doesn't ever go close quarters, but the former definitely has more of an emphasis on martial arts than the latter. Furthermore, the sense of speed and style from Woo differs from the grittier gunplay of Wick, with its breakneck pacing and trademark cutting between speedy carnage and poetic slow-mo, it's something I need to see return to the movies, and I'm hoping Borderlands could be it. I've seen John Woo's action described as balletic more times than I can count, but it's a word that pops up again and again for good reason. The way Tequila and Alan roll and crisscross through every corridor as they cook some fools feels fluid, Wu's improvisational style of direction results in absolute mayhem flying across the screen that is always anchored by the players in the fight. You never fail to understand what's going on no matter how chaotic the screen is or how quick the cuts are. His hero spin, his villains fly. Hunting season. John Woo and frequent collaborator Wing Hang Wong, who worked as the director of photography for A Better Tomorrow and The Killer, created the closest thing to the dictionary definition of cinematic gun porn. Seriously, I looked it up. The guns themselves are captured at arresting angles, with a lot of emphasis given to the mechanical nature of them. They're exciting and intimidating in equal measure, and Mad Dog gets a lot of the best angles and makes for a fantastic villain. But before I get on to my next point, I'd like to thank Blinkist for sponsoring today's video. You didn't see that coming? 
If you're always on the move or working hard, it can be difficult to squeeze in a lot of different books. Blinkist is an app that condenses big ideas into easily digestible 15 minute formats that can be enjoyed on your laptop, phone or tablet, either as a text or audible format. Blinkist is the only app that condenses over 4,500 non-fiction books to give you the key insights and knowledge of each book so that you can apply those lessons right away. I'd recommend The Science of Storytelling, one of many on their bestsellers list. Personally, I've found listening to them whilst doing more visual work like editing and photoshopping has been really great, and it's led me to pursue more books I wouldn't have otherwise known about. Blinkist has allowed me to read the key insights into some famous books such as So You've Been Publicly Shamed by John Ronson and The Data Detective by Tim Harford. The seven day trial is completely free, so you can cancel at any time during that period. The first 100 people to click on my link are going to get unlimited access for one week to try it out, and you'll also get 25% off if you want the full membership. You've got nothing to lose and lots to gain, so head on over to Blinkist now using my link to try it out today. Borderlands 3 is at its most fun when you're relentless, swift, and blasting, blasting, blasting. Using the Siren class with an amped up brawl skill tree really appealed to me for this reason. Rushing around to the Slaughter Star 3000 is a necessity to stay alive. I had the personal space, arms deal, and find your center skills upgraded, allowing me to deal more damage the closer I was to as many enemies as possible. That meant my game experience was centered around getting in, dealing huge amounts of damage, and leaving like it's a crime scene. This kind of free-flowing movement that never lets up is exactly what Wu nails in his action sequences. I would love to see Lilith and Roland enact some hard-boiled two-player co-op tequila and Alan style. Gee, that one take sequence is kind of like a video game already. Certainly some of the framing makes it feel like a co-op mode. They should really make a hard-boiled video game. Wouldn't that be great if they did that? John Wu is the master at providing clarity amongst carnage. Quentin Tarantino was a fan of Wu well before Hard Boiled, and I think his influence shines through when it came to deliver a pulse pounding shootout in Django Unchained. What it also did exceptionally well that Inglorious Bastards alum Eli Roth could steal are the over the top sound effects. As bullets fly and Django lays waste to Candy's crew, we hear blood splatter and boom. All the sound effects are either amped up to the point of absurdity, or completely different sound effects are paired to the action. As the bullets fly and hit the corpses littered around Django's position, Tarantino opts for the sound of a bomb dropping overhead to signify a cascading bullet hitting flesh. The sound design of the shootout is really effective because it is so made and unreal. We're fully aware of the presence of these sound effects, but the sheer carnage and wealth of performers throwing themselves left, right and centre makes it all feel like a dance anyway. It's got no realism to prove, and it's all the better for it. Borderlands should similarly have free reign to make its guns sound however the hell they want. Just do whatever sounds cool in the contextual moment of the scene. If it would work better with the sound of a bomb dropping, do it. The guns of Borderlands have a whole host of modifications and specialisations including alternate fires, incendiary rounds, electrical perks, acid, that's scratching the surface, but my point is the gunplay should be driven by not only a sense of clarity amongst carnage, but by the guns themselves and their wild abilities. A movie that does this really well... Yeah, I heard you hotshot. What? ...is Dread. I said, hotshot. The most memorable action beats of Dread often involve his trusty sidearm, the Lawgiver, which comes in a variety of different flavours. Raspberry Ripple, Fire! Rum and Raisin, and Coffee Revel. Incendiary. As with the aforementioned hotshot moments, the tension of the scene is often resolved via a clever use of the pistol's many alternate functions. Judge Anderson allows Kay to fire her own weapon in his mind, so that when he later gets the same opportunity in real life, he thinks the outcome will be the same. Little does he know that Anderson wanted him to think this. Oh shit! Oh shit! I guess the controls were isomorphic. Huh. 
Rapid fire. It's also used later as a way to communicate Dred's quickly depleting options, thereby upping the tension. Incendiary. Armor piercing. Yeah, I'd be breaking a sweat. If you hadn't just run out of bullets. The fanciful array of different weapon types Dredd has at his disposal always keeps things surprising and will no doubt get that from Borderlands, but way crazier. Ajax. Alex Garland's Dredd does a really good job of its action, but Dredd is surprisingly less hand-to-hand -hand centric than you would expect from a comic book movie. The action leans more on gunplay. It's about Dredd and Anderson getting to a better position, flanking their enemies, and sometimes knowing when to simply cut and run. Carl Urban's Dread is a stone-cold badass, but he is far from invincible. That vulnerability is what makes the dynamic between him and Olivia Thirlby's Judge Anderson significant. Wait, are you kidding me? Did he just say wait? They don't just make a good team, Wait for me to change my mind? Wait for another two or three seconds of life because you're so fucking weak you just can't stand to see it end? He needs her to survive. No. Oh, I've heard to shoot you. This is exactly the team dynamic I need from the Vault Hunters. Give them all the weapons and then some, but I don't want superheroes. These characters need to be viable exploding meat sacks just like the rest of the inhabitants of Borderlands. I also think Borderlands shouldn't be afraid to get surreal. The drug slow-mo is introduced as an in-universe explanation for bullet time. It leads to some really exaggerated action with oversaturated light and colours, as well as distorted sound. These moments are always a nice distraction from the more intense gunfights, and they feel appropriately otherworldly. They're not especially tense, but this stylized energy is exactly what the video game adaptation should strive for. <laughs> the existential horror of being forced to drop to your certain death in slow-mo infused uh, slow motion is something Borderlands should do, but funnier. Even though I don't want to see too much of a focus on hand-to-hand -hand combat, I think Borderlands could draw from John Wick's gunplay in a rather specific way. The Casablanca set team-up between John, Halle Berry, Sophia and the two dogs is a great litmus test for the pet companion characters like Mordecai and the Beastmaster Flack. If there ends up being a character in the movie who combines guns with racks, jabbers and spider ants, then I'd like to see the camera used the way it is in Stahelski's dog-eat-dog -dog action. The contrast of our human leads hacking and shooting the baddies, with the dog zipping across the screen for a host of savage kills keeps it interesting, and the novel way Sophia and the dogs team up to distract, intimidate and maim leads to some creative action. In Borderlands, your beasts often provide a real helping hand in otherwise hopeless spots, even providing that kill you need to get a second wind. The dogs in the movie consistently tear into the frame, just in the nick of time to save Sophia, and it really makes the companion relationship feel like an integral part of the action, rather than just a gimmicky afterthought. Eisenhower? Schwanz! They say you should never work with animals, but these war doggos of Wick make me think otherwise. Borderlands will probably opt for CGI monsters rather than practical mutts, but it would be cool to at least think about the way Parabellum constructs its action with the dogs. The number one lesson that Borderlands could take from all of these movies could be attributed to one quote from Wu on the commentary track for Hard Boiled. Logic is very boring. Nope, before you comment, logic isn't always boring, logic is arguably inherent to film, yada yada yada. Look how pedantic you're making me comment section. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a slip disc. Logic is boring, which is to say that these films bend the rules at every possible turn just for the sake of giving the audiences the most thrills possible, and they all work for that reason. The work of John Woo could not be better served by any allusions to realism. When I think about the Borderlands game franchise, I think exactly the same thing. That's ultimately why I would love, however much of a pipe dream it is, for this movie to be exactly as, air quotes, unrealistic as these movies. Give me John Woo slow-mo, regular mo, intercutting for no rhyme reason, give me debris flying left, right and centre, give me doves, maybe the doves are too much. Maybe. 
No matter what ends up happening with the look and feel of Borderlands, I feel confident in the creative team and I'll reserve any judgement until the final film is released. It would be so satisfying to finally get a truly good video game adaptation, something to really bring home to mum and dad. I hope it's as funny as Knock Knock, as brutal as Green Inferno, a fantastic cinematic experience that banks on the form rather than a pale imitation of the gaming experience you've already had, the justified and unjustified sufferer alike in Eli Roth's filmography, which is what the comedy of Borderlands revels in. Fuck, they have the munchies! <laughs> Add in the right action inspirations on an already stellar cast, and this could be the video game movie to blow all that stood before out of the water. What do you think? What's currently the best video game movie? Is Edge of Tomorrow awesome? Does it deserve its own video? Of course, the answer to the last one is yes! Get it. <laughs> Thanks for watching today's video. Two quick things before you go. As I mentioned earlier, I was lucky enough to appear on the screen test with Jack, Clarice and Joe, where we defended our favorite Tom Cruise movies. This, this whole movie is a masterclass in action editing. Kimmel, when he's crushed by the helicopter, we see that. We see uh, Emily Blunt's character, Rita, coming out and joining the battle. And we're, we're given all these like little pieces of geography so that when we go back and reset the day, we know instantly what's gonna happen. We know what Tom Cruise has got to overcome. That first scene in establishing establishing all those rules and establishing where everyone is. Um, it, it, it does so much in such a short space of time and it does it in such a way that the audience isn't even aware it's happening because they're not even aware of the payoffs until like four loops in when he finally saves Kimmel and like pushes him out of the way. You're like, oh, sweet. I had a lot of fun and at the time it came out, I was really excited to share it with you guys. I was gonna do a video about it, a community post, all of that jazz, but then my week got crazy messed up. My mum was due to go into hospital for surgery and I was meant to be looking after her. Two days into that, I ended up going into hospital for some unexpected surgery of my own. F you appendix. The last couple of weeks in recovery have been a bit of a scramble and that's also why I've had a longer gap than usual between videos. Uh, so sorry about that, but rest assured, I'm pretty much back to full capacity now. Oh, I felt something go there. Uh, if you'd like to hear me defend Edge of Tomorrow, please go to the screen test on Amazon Prime UK or hit the link in the description below. I'd love a shout out on it if you enjoy it. Thank you. Yep, I'm gonna use this drone. Go drone, up, up and away drone. Secondly, I just started up a Twitch. Thank you to everyone who came to the Borderlands 3 stream. It was a lot of fun. I'm probably going to play some Battlefront 2 next as well as whatever takes my fancy. It was kind of part stream, part Q&A, but I'm always up for taking some questions and I'd like to play a lot more multiplayer games because I think that'll be quick and fun. I think I'm going to start recording the footage from my video game essays as streams so you'll get the inside track on what videos I'm planning to make in the future here on YouTube. Please follow me there at Matt underscore full fat videos. Oh, 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 damn. Okay, right, should we, should we start strategizing? Hi guys, Matt here. Thank you for watching another full fat video. Don't forget to click that subscribe button and hit the bell so you know when a new video drops. If you'd like to get in touch with me, why not follow me on Twitter at full fat videos or on Instagram at full underscore fat underscore videos. A big personal thank you to our full fat tier patrons, Dr. Chike, Jax Merrick and Cyrus Sulker. Your ongoing support keeps the lights on. Until next time, keep it full fat.